previously go... uh, joined. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, yeah, I was going to say, let's go back to like the SpaceX time, right? Because you mm -hmm. were in that life far longer than you've been in this one. And so I think True. that the foundation that was built during your time at SpaceX and even as a kid, like even, you know, getting out of high school into college and doing all this, it really kind of sets the, the tone and the benchmark for who you are now. So I want to dive a little deeper into that. Um, okay. So we'll start it at SpaceX and then go backwards. Uh, when you were at SpaceX, what were you doing? Um, well, I started SpaceX in February 2017, and I was a propulsion technician on the Dragon 2 spacecraft. Um, the Dragon 2 spacecraft, which is a most recently developed capsule that uh, has taken American astronauts to the moon and are hopefully going to take them elsewhere. Or not to the moon, my God, the space station. <laughs> I believe you. I <laughs> mean, yeah, you could have up there. Saturn, and I would have believed um, you. <laughs> Oh no, but yeah, took, uh, took our astronauts to the space station. So I started working on that when it was still in early development and we were building the propellant tanks. So these large titanium tanks that basically have to operate in microgravity. So you think of like a fuel tank on a car, it's like gravity fed, you know, like gravity feeds the fuel down to like the engine where it needs to go. Yeah. Um, but in microgravity, you need to have all these extra special devices that are woven in and built into this tank so that can operate in a zero gravity environment so you have stuff like these weird like tiny little mesh screens like built onto this like complicated like frame so that way they can pump helium in the top and they could push using like these screens and these different methods like push the fuel to where it needs to go without ever letting like bubbles of gas get into the fuel and it was just a very a uh, high level of precision job, high level of like cleanliness standard because it operates to like NASA specifications. What was the job? Like, I'm guessing you didn't learn how to become a <laughs> SpaceX technician from YouTube. Like you went to college for this? No, no, no. Actually, they just got me in on my prior military experience. I was in the Air Force for eight years before that. Okay. So they, and you were doing me an interview. similar work? Similar stuff. I was overhauling like hydraulic components, bench checking hydraulic components on like a test stand for uh, the KC-135 strato tankers. They're those big hulking like gray Boeing 737 types of planes that refuel other jets like in the air. Yeah. With like a long like penile looking appendage that hangs off the back and yeah, yeah. shoots its I know fuel. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Into other jets and stuff like that. So that's what I was doing before so that. Prior... So they kind of... Mm -hmm. So prior to SpaceX, you were in the military. Were you um, the kid in high school that just didn't know what he wanted to do, and so all else failed, and you joined the military? Or what's like what was, was the reason behind? It. Yeah, that was pretty much it because I I did not know what I wanted to do with my life. Like if you try to put my goals and my feelings about where I saw myself as an adult into like a box, I couldn't really tell you. And I still can't really tell you according to like the standards that they give us in high school where it's like, Oh, you want to be a dentist? Do you want to be a lawyer? Right. You want to be right. a meteorologist on the weather? And I'm like, right. I don't, I don't really want to do any of that stuff. I really, I didn't want to work a typical job. I never have, you know? And I was just kind of like, this is something that you have to go off and do now. So I was like, screw it. I'll join the air force. At least get to travel and see places and meet Did you cool go to people. Cool and I get to, well, uh, I got stuck in Kansas for seven years. <laughs> one of the best, one of the best places on the planet, it, dude. It was know? it was a pretty cool place to be. There were some really friendly people, good barbecue. I got to live on a lake for a very cheap, very cheap apartment. But as far as traveling, I mean, I got to go to Qatar, which is a pretty cool little country just across the Persian Gulf from yeah. Iran. Um, I got to spend a little time in like Germany and England, but I never really got to go. It wasn't like this like high flying dream that I thought it would be where I'd just be like sailing, you know, just flying from destination to destination. Right. Spend time in Italy and Rome and, you know, do stuff and it's exotic and it didn't really manifest that way, but so as a <laughs> it kid, ended up being fun. So as a kid, like mm -hmm. were you um rebellious? What was your mindset growing up? Like were you it seems like you were lost in translation for a lot of A life. little bit. A little um, bit, yeah. So I, I kind of grew up with uh, parental figures who weren't really, I don't know, they weren't really strong parental figures. Nothing really encouraged me one way or the other to kind of embrace these new pursuits. And I was kind of like adrift for a while, and I was kind of lost, and I was trying to figure out my way, not sure what I wanted to do. Were your parents and, married? Uh, were they married? Yeah. Is that what you asked? Yeah. yeah, they were married at the time. Okay. Yeah. 
but uh, they were they were rough people. They were kind of older, um, like traditional Christian type mindset. So mm. it was kind of like restricted in my household of like what you could and couldn't watch on television or what get video games you could play or what music you could listen to even. So it was pretty restrictive. And I spent a lot of time growing up just waiting to get the hell out of there. So not so only did the Air Force promise travel, but also gave me an opportunity to get out of my house, which is what I really wanted more than anything. And so were you growing up, like, did you buy into the dogma or were you from a get the get go kind of like, this is crazy. I'm not, I don't feel like the military dogma. No, the religious stuff. Oh, oh, well, no, not, not really. I mean, I used to be a Christian when I was younger, um, yeah. but it was mainly, I'd go to church for like the comfort of being at church for like the little feel good feels that you get in your tummy whenever you were there. Yeah. And just feel kind of connected because I wasn't really there for like the religion. I was there to kind of like try and feel something. And that kind of did push me on a spiritual journey. That's that's part of uh, something else we could talk about. But um, I definitely didn't buy into all of it. You know, like the things like basically if you don't do this, that or the other thing, like you're going to hell. Yeah. Or <laughs> just right. stuff it's like crazy. that. I never bought into that because I was just like, I don't I don't feel like you know, like a God like that would punish people like eternally for right. doing something like, I don't know, they didn't do their taxes or something, or they just committed a sin, like, or just they watched something bad on television that had boobies in it. So now they're damned. Right. So I, I don't think, know. <laughs> you know, I think for kids, man, I think it's really important. Um, the relationship between parents and kids, like, is that you trust your parents, is that you feel safe there. And, you know, I think that a fine line is drawn when, parents lose sight of protection and control. Um, and it sounds like they were far more on the control side. And so that makes you feel um, a lack of trust. Is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely. And I know now that, you know, looking at it in hindsight, now that I'm older, now that I've had these talks with my parents and I kind of understand where they came from, they were just so like deathly afraid that I would turn out like they did when they were in their youth, I guess. And they feel mm. like they, they, they collectively messed up a lot of stuff in their younger years. And they were really hard on me in the trying to steer me away from that so that I'd have a good life, quote unquote. But they were kind of like smothering at the same time in their efforts to kind of control every little detail. But I understand now why they did what they did. And I'm able to forgive them. How for... old were you when you had that moment with your parents? Were you like, you know, like I think there's a moment that every child has with their parents where they mm. see them as people. Um like when was it, that it, moment for you? It probably took and I, I was maybe like I want to say between like 25 and 27 when wow. I when the lights started coming on about the kind of people they were and like I just kind of saw them as people who tried their best even though they might have royally messed up some stuff. I know that they like did everything they did out of love whether yeah. it seemed right at the time or whether they regret it later. I mean, I know at the in the moment they thought they were doing what what was best, you know? And I think, so. man, there's, there's moments in life when, um, you kind of hit these milestones of like perspective that unlock your potential. Um, you know, at 27, we'll say 27, you have this moment where you come to a, a state of forgiveness and perspective that, you know, kind of allows you more freedom, right? Because you, you become a prisoner to your <clears throat> thoughts um Absolutely. have you struggled with mental health uh at all oh yeah like a lot all the time actually um i have like very severe anxiety that kind of comes and goes and sometimes it can be triggered by events that happen like seemingly minor stuff that kind of blooms into like this big thing that where it shouldn't be yeah i can sometimes get very anxious about my my physical health um or even just nothing at all sometimes it just wakes up and it just it just happens it's there how does it and then manifest I'm dealing with for you? It. Usually manifest is like a feeling either in my stomach or my chest. And it's kind of like this, this like nagging, like itchy type of sticky feeling that kind of like just grows. And just like... Kind of like that, where it just kind of becomes like a heaviness or your chest feels tight. And uh, yeah, like you said, you can't catch your breath. You, you just find yourself like, what's going on? You know, you're in like kind of like a freak out kind of mode. Yeah. And sometimes that's persisted for me for like weeks. Sometimes it's been days or sometimes it's really it's intense, like a panic attack, which can last like, you know, just several minutes or something. And it's definitely not fun. I also struggle with depression. Um, 
but I've kind of dealt with that for most of my life now. I can relate, man. You know, this yeah. is my interview, but I'll tell my story one day. It's very similar. Um, you know, and, and if any of these questions are crossing a line, you can just say, Wes, I don't want to talk about this. Um, oh, it's all good. But, you know, I, I'm guessing you found like healthy coping mechanisms. Were you, did you struggle with escapism? Like, were, did you have any like addiction issues? Did you have any like, like what did you do to cope uh, before you figured out healthy practices and management skills? Totally. Um, escaping used to be the name of the game back, especially early mid 20s. Um, before I got into alcohol, I was into pills a lot. Um, and there weren't even like any, I don't know what you call good pills. Like they weren't like benzos or oh, okay. oxys or anything like that, or any kind of narcotics. They were, uh, it was cold medicine while I was in the air force. So we used to do, uh, cold medicine pills and have like these like robo trips or different, like, you know, eat oh, a bunch of core God. seed and cough and cold. Robo tripping. I haven't heard <clears throat> that term in so long. I mean, yeah. Did you ever, did you ever hear Bad. about kids in like high school smoking nutmeg? Like, I remember a kid came to me one time. I did hear about that on, like, Arrowhead or something a long if time ago. this nutmeg, nut dude, like, <laughs> it's going to work. And I just remember being like, let's do it. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if it did anything uh, in hindsight. But, man, it's interesting, right? Like, our culture doesn't teach healthy coping mechanisms. Um, Not usually. No, yeah. they don't. And so, you know, I think really, like, the point of this interview, man, we can talk about NFTs, we can talk about, you know, the, the professional stuff, but I really get a sense that your spirit and your journey is the story that needs to be told here. So we're going to dive deep. Um, okay. So, you know, like you, you talk about escaping was the thing, blah, blah, blah. Um, talk me through some, like a catalyst moment where you realized that you were running away from the monster that you just needed to face? Like, when did that happen for you? Well, um, definitely happened in my mid to late 20s when I was just drinking a lot. 33 now. Okay. So it happened a lot in my mid to late 20s when I would just drink to kind of like hide any kind of other feeling that I was feeling. Yeah. I really hated my life at the time when I was in the Air Force and I was working in the hydraulic bag shop and kind of just doing the same thing day in and day out, dealing with people who I didn't really like. And uh, I used to turn to drinking pretty much every single night to try to like cope and just have something like comforting, like wrapping yourself up in like a warm blanket, you know, and there came a time and this had been after I got out of the military and I kind of was still engaging in those habits. And then I started kind of questioning because I was like the major thing, like out of the military, I was done. I was in California. I was living a new life, but why was I still turning to the same habits? Mm. And I realized that it kind of ran deeper. Like the dissatisfaction ran deeper than the military. It ran deeper into like something I didn't like about myself. And yeah. uh, that was the first time. Do you remember then, a moment? Like, do you remember like a night when, like, did you do any like psychedelic research? I, I have done a little bit of psychedelic research here and there, um, mostly with, with Joey, actually. Like, you know, <laughs> here and there, we had, we had a couple of interesting times, but it didn't actually happen then. It happened, uh, I guess a defining moment happened when I was smoking a bunch of weed, actually, okay. <laughs> like a while back. Okay. And I thought that, like, you know, smoking weed was good. It's cool. I, you know, I still very much am a fan of it. But uh, I realized that I was doing the same thing and I realized that I was becoming dissatisfied and I was just smoking just to smoke. And I realized that one day and I was about to smoke again and I was like, I'm, I'm like, I, I was thinking to myself, like, holy crap, I'm still high or I'm like not getting high, but I'm still smoking. Like, what the hell am I doing? Like, why am I still doing this? And I realized right. that like, just a habit. I just didn't even like the feeling of being sober, you know, like being completely sober. Like I just didn't like it for whatever reason. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Did we lose the video or something? Because uh -oh. it's looking like oh, it just freaked out for a moment. We good? Maybe that was just on my end. But it just came down to the fact that, like, I just didn't like the feeling of being sober and I couldn't figure out why, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what spurred me on to do, like, even more digging about, like, why I felt that way or try to uncover the person who I was and, like, try to, you know, realize why I felt those, those kinds of ways. 
And so who are you? Like, like, what did you find about yourself that, um, because would you like, I don't like, I think there needs to be a moment of transparency. Like, do you feel like you are in a healthy place right now, mentally, spiritually, you know, like, do you feel, obviously we're all learning every day. No one's perfect, man. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's a ridiculous thing to imply, but, um, do you feel like you are in the best place you've ever been? Do you like, where are you at right now? I feel like I'm in a very good place mentally and spiritually. I feel like um, I'm exactly where I need to be right now. That's a beautiful. I yeah. feel like that no matter where I am, that the universe is going to continue to throw us challenges and not to let us grow stagnant, continue to find ways to push our growth and our healing. Because honestly, I could say all day, like, yeah, I'm healed. I'm, I'm a better person. I'm not that person that I was or whatever. And then the universe just throws a little challenge in your way. And, you know, you find more things that you need to overcome and grow and heal from. So I think, yeah, I am exactly where I need to be. And I feel that the universe is, you know, going to continue to challenge me to heal and grow and develop myself because the work is never really over. So what are you some know. practices, you know, for, for everyone in the chat that's listening, like what are some practices mm. that you can recommend that you've found that not only are like healthy coping, healthy coping mechanisms, but that fuel your creativity, like as an artist, which you are, um, you have to not only be doing things that are healthy, but you also have to always be stoking your creative fire. Like, absolutely. Talk me through like your um like a monday morning you know as far as being a, a creative like what is your process what is your you know routine okay well um i wake up at usually whatever the hell time i feel like which is great. i like that i like that. a sudden alarm but i try to wake okay. up on the earlier side of things and then on my, but my best mornings i like to go out and i like to spend some time in nature and just kind of like appreciate everything the morning has to offer and I really like pay attention to things like the breeze. I'll pay attention to the way the sun feels on my face. I'll pay attention to like little things like the way the wind like moves the leaves and the trees or just like what kind of creatures I can see that are out and about. Usually I do this while barefoot. And this kind of gets me in like a really mindful, appreciative, grateful state. Because yeah. what I like to do first thing in the morning is just really think about everything that I'm grateful for in my life, you know, and to include the things around me to to kind of like get just get really appreciative of just the simple things that oftentimes we overlook or forget about like the wind or the sun or the clouds or just another new day that's like stretching out before us so that'd be the first thing that i do okay um get into some good breakfast probably take uh is it avocado take some toast good mushroom it... pills it might be avocado toast it might be some oatmeal it okay. might be uh just a random like breakfast scramble dish, you know, you're a man of class. Never really know, but, but, uh, yeah, after some food and, you know, some of that quiet reflection, maybe a cup of tea, I usually like, uh, digging into vitamins. So I usually get into some, I mean, if we're getting really nitty gritty with it, like, I like taking some vitamin C, some vitamin D in the morning, as well as, uh, I've got this Paul Stamets blend of like seven essential adaptogenic mushrooms that I take. Not a psychedelic, found, right? Non psychedelic, they're just like okay. like uh, like reishi, like lion's mane, chaga, turkey tail, a few others besides those. But I've found that um, a lot of these mushrooms, I don't know like offhand personally. I know like lion's mane, a few others are great for yeah, uh, strengthening like neuro connections in the brain, for like better response time, being able to think think quick more quickly on your feet. Clearly I haven't taken my mushrooms today. But you can <laughs> think more time. quickly on your feet. You're more adaptive. You're able to respond to like things faster and better, I guess, in a way. And like thoughts come better. So as like a creator and like someone who entertains and to so someone who thrives on at least attempting to be witty on camera, you know, taking those mushrooms and stuff that really helped me um just stay on the ball, I guess, you know, and, especially if I'm feeling foggy or whatever. Like I am definitely a person who chases feelings as well. Like, do you feel something or is it just like, is it less of a feeling and more of a, like, you just feel like you're fire. Uh, you feel like you're firing on all cylinders. That's a hard from the mushrooms. Yeah. It's definitely more of a firing on all cylinders feeling and combined with like, uh, like a steady focus, you know, I'm going to turn okay. my tablet off cause it's dinging. 
but yeah, it's like a like a steady type of focus feeling that I haven't really experienced. You sell out of uh, um, NFTs, and then you buy a tablet, dude. I don't even from my tablet, coffee. Dude. This is yeah. uh, this is my work tablet. Okay, this is uh, for for your Jackbox work... games. Okay, I was about um, to say, it's your... for drawing drawing new frogs and stuff. I got this nice little Apple pencil. Okay, and uh, but yeah, it's it's and scheduling and this stuff. This is uh, I'll show you my tablet. You want to see? You want to see my tablet? Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's a uh, whiteboard. Nice, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but, uh, dude, so, um, okay, so uh, this is a, a question I want to ask about. So you talk about Theta Frogs, and we can go back into mm -hmm. some of the routine stuff, but I think this is an appropriate sure. question for right now. Your name is Just Weird TV, right? Mm -hmm. Theta Frogs is your project. Yeah. Where did Just Weird TV come from? That's, that's interesting, actually. Yeah, so when I was working at SpaceX, before we founded the stream, obviously, um, I had a guy that was working for me that I'd become friends with. His name was Richard. Um, we had a mutual buddy, Colin, and uh, Richard has uh, he's he's a very big creative guy. He's very spiritual, and um, we kind of met just at our work, and we had like a lot of conversations late at night, like into the wee hours of the morning, talking about like aliens and talking about past lives and reincarnation and <sighs> spirituality and like uh, you know conspiracy theories and shit like that. And they were just such good conversations. We just decided we wanted to start like a podcast about it and just okay. start talking about this stuff when we got off of work. So determining what to call it, we kind of settled on the, the name Just Weird TV kind of randomly because everything that we talked about under the sun was just completely weird and, you know, off the beaten path and yeah, stuff that normal. you'd, you know, down a rabbit hole type conversations. So it actually started with Richard and I doing a podcast. Um, and if you want to get technical, it started with our mutual friend, Daryl. And he, he, he uh, we, we all started Darryl. streaming, uh, not streaming, but doing podcasts together, just talking around like a phone and, and uh, talking about whatever we had. And like, I think we'd go through the day and we'd make a list of topics and weird things that were like news story headlines and things that we heard from like coworkers that we wanted to research and talk about. And it was really cool. We also had a third guy or fourth guy, Colin, who's a music producer that would come on and do like DJ sets from time to time. Okay. And gradually we transitioned to Twitch and started streaming and, uh, oh crap. We came so affiliated you've been on streaming Twitch for a minute. Like I didn't, I, I didn't realize that you, how long your history of like content creation was. So you, you, you started making podcasts and then you went to Twitch and then Theta. Yeah. Did you yeah, do that? YouTube? was in 20, that was in late 2019. Didn't really mess around with YouTube. I have a few YouTube videos out there, which are pretty silly. That was like when I just started Just Weird TV and I was more okay. on my own. Really silly videos and a couple of me doing like really poor acoustic guitar covers out there yeah, yeah, yeah. on like, YouTube uh, as well. Hey there, Delilah but, um, and like banana pancakes. Hell, hey there, Delilah. Oh my God. Dude, that's, banana that's one of my favorites to do karaoke to actually, you know. Bro, every time I was at like a high school Hi party. Hi there, Delilah. What's it like, like in New, New York, York City? City? I'm a thousand miles. <laughs> but yeah, dude, every high school party I went to, if there was a guitar, I would just pick it up and hopefully like there weren't just like guys around me because that would not be the purpose of what I'm doing. Some people would yeah. want guys to listen and like shout out to y'all. But for me, I wanted to make sure that there were women around me. And so I would just start playing banana pancakes, but I only knew the beginning. I only knew the boom, doo doom, doo doom, doo doom, doom. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, like keep playing this song and sing it. And I'm like, I only so know I this got. part. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, shout out to acoustic covers. Um, so, but it sounds Love like it. the, uh, Daryl, Colin, Richard, you, I'm impressed. I knew all those names. It sounds like those guys like aren't in the band anymore they're not in the group. not so much no i've actually i've been talking to colin recently um he he wants to do more stuff with music he's a really talented music producer and sometimes i'll like lend vocals to some of his tracks so he's hit me up saying like hey we're moving forward this track and bringing somebody else on to it want to let you know we're jamming on it it'll be probably released soon and i'm like damn i can't remember recording that it sounds great um richard went off and became he became a scientologist actually oh so, i gotta we kind of like i gotta talk to him dude and then we kind of fell out a little bit, but he was like, we were, we were jamming on just weird TV and making content. We started doing a TikTok actually, oh, dude. which was really silly. Were you dancing? But, um, Tell me the truth. Yeah. We were dancing a little bit. I knew, I knew it. Yeah. It was bad. It. Cause I, yeah, I this like, has been a good interview, man. Thanks. For I felt bad about myself the entire time I was doing it, 
but uh you know i'm not i'm not ashamed to get out there and just bust the fucking move or whatever you know here and there dude but i'll, um, I'll dance it was, it was right now not really i you mean want, i would you want to dance but... right we could do that we could pass the beat back and forth like i could do like a little like a worm yeah, yeah. thing and pass it go, over to you and go uh, <laughs> let's do it right now let's do it right now go That was appropriate. I think that really fit in this spiritual podcast. Or uh, interview, you guys, is, you guys could tell we're white, right? Everybody could tell we're white. I'm here. Jewish, dude. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just light skinned my guy. Oh, uh, man. But man, so, uh, so, but, but to, to, the reason I, I asked about Richard and Colin and Daryl not being in the band anymore mm-hmm. was like, why? From a branding side, like you know, coming from corporate entertainment. You know, like if we were in the in the branding meeting, I would say abandon the Just Weird TV logo and just go by. I like I haven't said your last name because I didn't know if you wanted me to, but just go by oh, your full name. Ganji. There you go. I yeah. could do that too, but the the whole focus it's why a little late I wanted now. to keep. Yeah, the whole reason why I wanted to keep Just Weird TV is because it was never just like about me, like myself and my own brand, but it's about something like bigger than that. You know, it's about. For me, Just Weird TV is like providing a home for people who are kind of like crazy and off balance like myself, um, providing something spiritual and kind of health and wellness oriented for the Internet, for this community um, and kind of like growing, growing a community where everybody kind of feels comfortable being themselves and kind of sharing stories and just getting deep and even vulnerable at times with each other and kind of like growing and healing together as we move on through life, you know, while keeping it weird, while keeping it a little lighthearted, um, keeping it a little zany, but Good it's work. never been just like about me, you know, because I've always wanted to get out there and help people. Like the more that I've grown myself and the more that I've like overcome my own personal challenges and hurdles, the more I've wanted to kind of like share that with other people and kind of build upon that. So at, at the very first, the stream wasn't so much about that. It was about like, oh, we're sharing our weird concepts. We're talking about past lives. We're talking about what interests us. But then it kind of became more of like, let's help each other out. Let's try to help people. Let's try to grow together type of thing, you know? Okay, so let's say in a perfect world, and we're talking like utopian situation, right? Mm-hmm. Money wasn't an issue. You know, you have 100,000, a million followers um, across socials, right? Not like Jesus, but you know what I mean? And like uh, you, like every resource is at your disposal. Do you, okay. do you know like the exact ways in which you would help? Like what would be your action steps? Well, um, if I had unlimited resources at my yeah. disposal, yeah. I'd definitely be traveling a lot more um, because I really want to see people like in person and do like live shows. Um, and those would probably involve a cooking aspect and like a musical aspect and like, let's just kind of talk and have a heart to heart aspect. Um, okay. Because so I would probably do live shows where we do some kind of cooking because I love to cook and I've done a lot of cooking streams where we kind of share like healthy recipes and like just weird foods like submitted by viewers and stuff that we make live on stream. So I'd probably do that, but like on a massive scale so that we can all like hand out food to everybody and we can all like eat together. You know, because I think one thing that kind of like helps build community and bind us together is like when we sit down at a table and eat together. So I think I'd like 100%. to bring that to folks. I'd like to play my my passable guitar skills for people and kind of do concerts and then talk and kind of share um, what I'm about, like energetically and spiritually with people, whether it be through um, Reiki or just talking about wellness or talking about doing shadow work and healing and overcoming from trauma. What is stuff Reiki? like that? Reiki is uh, an energy healing modality that comes out of Japan. Okay. Um, it came from this guy, uh, Mikao Usui, in like the late 1800s, early 1900s. He's the founder. He went up and like fasted on a mountain in Japan for like 20, 30 days, almost died. He was going okay. up there basically to die. And like the hand of God was upon him basically and gave him like this gift so he could channel energy from like the highest spiritual planes of the universe and use it to heal is he and a like real bless, guy? Bless stuff. Yeah, well, he's a real guy. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And then he founded a Reiki school in Japan and trained a bunch of Reiki masters who would go out to train their own Reiki masters and kind of build and develop upon his knowledge. And every Reiki master, including myself, can trace their lineage back to this, the founder, Mikao Usui, which is pretty cool. But to put Whoa. it simply, um, 
I connect with either you call it God, source, spirit, the universe. I yeah. connect with that energy. And it's like I set an intention of where the Reiki is going to go. And I could send it to people to like heal if they have like pain or an illness or disease. I could send it to a goal like uh, like someone's successful marriage that they have coming up or a gathering. I could send it to making money or, or something like that, like an idea. Um, I could send it into the past. I could send it to like a natural disaster, like a group of people. Um, you could use it to bless objects or medicine. Um, stuff like that and it's just like taking reiki itself is japanese for like basically rei is like holy and ki is energy life force so it's like really great spiritual energy that comes from the highest spiritual planes that you can use to bless or heal so what's the difference between that and prayer is it just a semantic thing like is it just a way you say it because i mean i think a lot of people would say like when you pray you're distributing energy and and you know putting off your good vibes and stuff on people i also know nothing about this so i'm well, um, I don't, I don't think there's like a whole lot of difference. I say Reiki would be more of like, you have to be trained by someone who's been a master, who's been trained by somebody before them. And you kind of have to be like attuned to it. So they do something to your chakras, your energy centers that go along your spine that actually enable you to channel this energy. When did you have this? When did you get trained? <clears throat> I started doing this in, I want to say it was right after I got let go from my job at SpaceX, actually in 2020 okay okay that's when i started on that spiritual path with richard actually so it was pretty cool we got to learn together and bring it to the stream and what i found is by like putting that reiki energy by doing that reiki blessing um i know i've had skeptics before but most people say they can feel it and it kind of like draws people in it draws people closer because whether or not people know exactly what's happening or they know what reiki is everyone kind of feels like a warm, like a warm and fuzzy type feeling inside, you know, and it's just kind of like a really pleasant, like feeling of like you're being at home, you know, do you, sort of so like, do that. you like say stuff? Like, do you like speak while you're doing it? Like hands over the person? Like, um, not usually. I mean, for, for the stream, like I'll put my hands together and I'll set the intention, which is usually something like uh, channeling Reiki, from the highest spiritual planes to all the viewers here just weird TV from past, present, and future. So that way it affects everybody in the past, everybody who hasn't even come and seen me yet. They get the blessing too. Um, and I say across all timelines and dimensions. So that way on timelines where I'm doing this and we're streaming and I'm not a Reiki master, they're getting it. It's like really crazy how it affects because the energy flows across all timelines and dimensions. It's not limited by space and time as we know it. What's been the craziest experience you've had with it? With Reiki? Yeah. Like for you um, personally or with someone else, like what's been the most like, you know, intense? Probably is a crazy, uh, a crazy experience for me uh, personally was I've had a bad shoulder for several years. Yeah. And I think we talked about this recently because it actually mm -hmm. popped out of the socket recently when I was in Nashville. Really painful experience. Uh, we talked about that one real quick. I was just had a box up on the top of the shelf in a yeah. closet and it had like these jars of sauce and heavy shit. And I just went to grab it because I was getting ready to load the car up, you know, and I just grabbed it really quick and I was up here over my head and I just, it just slipped out and it just comes, it just slides down the sockets like eroded away and it was just really, really painful. Dude. So the entire time it was stuck out of the socket on the way to the hospital, I'm just kind of like, Oof. you know, infusing yeah. Reiki into the shoulder, which is basically like, I just imagine like it's flowing in through the top of my head. And it's, it's like a, like a fire hose of energy, just blasting the shoulder with healing energy. And I'll, I'll tell you the truth, dude. Like after I got it back in, like I wore the sling for one night, but I was supposed to have it in for like, have it in the sling for like a week after, but I was good. Like I was good to drive. Even now there's like very minimal pain and it's, it's very, it's uncharacteristically well compared to when I didn't have the Reiki when I first dislocated, like in 2018. <laughs> That's amazing. It was the first that's time it happened. It's unreal, dude. Like, I mean, I believe you, but and it's, it's just, like it's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, it's, I, I can't believe it either. And there are just times, I can't think of anything specifically, but when I've just been doing the Reiki, like, out in the stream, like, I've had a few people come up to me and they're like, wow, I really felt that. Or, like, I felt that I feel so much better, you know, or, like, my headache went away or something like that. People will tell me in the chat. And because, you know, there are times where I get, like, a little bit of imposter syndrome where i kind of came onto the scene with reiki and i'm just kind of holding my hands out and it started off with like i'm not sure if anything's happening and uh, it felt kind of weird to do but the more i 
the more I did it, the more I practiced and the more people gave me positive feedback. I was like, holy crap, like this is really happening. And I'll Dude, tell I'll you tell what, it. like the yeah, more yeah. you channel energy and the more you feel it flow through you, like if you do this on a daily basis, you get really sensitive to energy to the point where you can kind of like feel it moving through your body and you can kind of channel it at will more. It's, it's really weird, you know? It's just, the, it's really weird. The older I get, man, the more in tune with that I become. Like, I, uh, I I have been on a spiritual journey myself. And, like, man, I think that, like, you know, I think a lot of people call it intuition, um, whatever. But, man, I, I definitely feel like, you know, sometimes if I'm in a room, if I'm in a setting that, like, I just, the energy just is off. Like, I, I can almost, like, feel and hear my spirit being, like, it's time for you to go, Wes. Like, it's, like, you know. And, like, even, like with food, man, like I'll be eating, like I could lose, you know, 20 pounds, whatever. But, um, like when I'm eating really healthy, I, it's a clear difference. Like I can feel, you know, the effects and I, people would say like, duh, the other one for me is man. So I have psoriasis. So, you know, that's like uh, like your skin thinks that it's like processing more skin or whatever. It's a, and if I mm -hmm. eat like really healthy, if I eat a lot of meat, it goes away. Like it just disappears. It's wild, dude. So yeah, I get it, man. I think that, you know, the spirit and health journey is something that like, man, it never ends. And I get frustrated with like the people on TikTok and Instagram who are like, you know, like the all knowing, I think that it's, it's a lot more valuable to just kind of be like, listen, we're all on this together. If I can help you and teach you something that I know, then great. But like, do you get bothered by the like, you know, the like all knowing people who were like, you know, well, you know, to be honest, I don't really get bothered. I've been training myself to get less bothered. You know, that's beautiful, man. Because like everybody, everybody's on their own personal path, you know, spirituality, life, whatever you call it. Everybody's trying to find their way up the mountain and taking different paths. And for those people who think they have all the answers, eventually, whether I say something or not, the universe is going to come in and they're going to shake up their life to the point where they're going to realize, oh, no, I don't have all the answers. Because, I mean, there have been times in my life where I thought I had it figured out. I thought I had it figured out at 21 or like whatever, 23, Same. 24. Yeah, totally. You know, and then a certain time goes by and you're like, holy shit, like I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. But I think for those people, like the universe has a way of like coming into their life in a way to kind of shake up their world. Yeah, you know, because no matter like how much you think you've known or, or grown, like there's always more to learn. There's more to grow. There's things like lying, wait, lying in wait deep inside you, which haven't even been activated yet, which is just waiting for the right circumstance to get activated. And then you're like, holy crap, I need to really work on this. I don't know where this even came from, but I just had to be put in the right circumstance to get it activated. Now I know that I need to work on something else. And it's just kind of it is a journey. So I hope everybody yeah. can realize that. And for the most part, I think people do. So let's, but yeah, go ahead. let's talk. Let's talk about Theta Frogs a little bit. Um, OK, because I think that, you know, like, dude, it's interesting that you from this story would pick and I say this respectfully, but pick such a like fun, kind of silly, goofy thing as a frog for your NFT. Right. Like, I'm surprised that it's yeah. not more like, you know, third eye stuff. Uh, why did you pick frogs? Um, man. So I, I've just I just been on a frog kick for a while. I don't know what it was, but um, I've just been looking at a lot of pictures and memes about frogs. Um, <laughs> I think Joey okay. and I were playing a lot of <laughs> Joey and I were playing a lot of this game called I think it's called like Scribble.io or something. But it's a game yeah. where you can kind of like draw pictures and people have to guess what they are. And I was saying like frog a lot for a lot of the answers, and I had frog like stuck on my brain. And I don't know. I just think the whole frog concept, I think they're just really funny. Like they just make me laugh every time I see them because they're just goofy. That's amazing. Silly I love that animals. that's your reason. I love yeah. that that's your reason. But I just yeah. want to do something that was honestly like silly and lighthearted, you know, and like something okay. that wasn't too like serious hitting the floor for an NFT project. Plus I had a, I was struggling finding a way to make something like, cause I want to do spiritual stuff. Cause they like, I thought about what my first drop would be. And I was like, oh, auction off like five 30 minute distance Reiki sessions with Matt. And like, you know, maybe like, I don't know, something else like that, something more spiritually minded. But when I really thought long and hard about it, I was like, man, I don't think most people are going to like 
give two shits about this. Not because they don't care about spirituality and wellness, but most people are going to be like, who the hell is this guy? And why should we get a healing session from him? Yeah. You know, I still, I didn't think I was really too well known, especially in the theta drop community among these like NFT crypto investors. So I wanted to put something out there that would kind of get the attention of new investors and new, new people and kind of give something to, you know, the crowd who had been there before. How long you know? into like, I don't know, when, do you, when did Theta come out? When did Theta Drop come out? You know? Theta Drop. Um, oh boy, I think Theta Drop came out, I want to say late last year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look in my, my wallet really quick in my collection. I'm going to see my first NFT because they had the okay. mainnet launch. Okay. So the mainnet launch was right around June of 21, like last year, was the oh. mainnet launch. It's for, brand new. Yeah, Theta Drop has not been around for even a full year yet. I think a lot of people, you know, in this community, they want to either do a project, right? They're try they want to be a creator. Mm -hmm. How did you get in the door? Uh, being a uh, like on Theta TV? No, no, like or uh, just in general, like having a project. Oh, having an NFT project. Well, I saw a lot of these really cool avatar projects going out. Um, I saw, you know, the board apes and uh, the, the punks and stuff like that, the crypto punks. And I was like, yeah, these are really cool. You know, they're like randomly generated art and there's different like attributes and stuff. But I wanted to do something that was, I don't know, like more, more painstaking, laborious, but also more like loving and detailed. And I wanted to do each each piece of art by myself, like draw each one by hand yeah. and create different characters and stuff. So it'd be an avatar project, which is something people are already kind of familiar with, but taking in a different direction where it's all hand drawn live on stream of different characters that kind of already existed. You drew all making, of them like, on trading live? Cards. No, about 95% of them I did live. There were a few that I did offline when I was trying to catch up or make time to meet a deadline, but majority of those frogs were all done live. But how did you, audience. like, how did you get at the, and obviously some of this stuff is like, you know, I understand you talk about, but for what you can say, like, what advice do you have for NFT creators, for artists that want to have a drop on Theta? Like, like you know, what well, the climates, you the climates become very different from when I enter in the game because it kind of helped me that Theta TV was already looking to do drops with creators that were on the platform and they kind of saw, I literally just started doing this avatar project for frogs. And I was like, let me just start drawing these frogs. Let me see how many I can get done. Let's have fun with it on stream. It'll be a fun cooperative activity and yeah. the right blockchain, the right NFT project will kind of flush itself out. And it just so happened that the Theta Drop team asked me if they if I wanted to do a drop with my frogs. Now I know there's, way more people trying to get into theta drop so now they have more fleshed out project where it's like you know get your drop outlines settled like figure out what you're going to do give us some examples and now i think it's come down to the point where you're pitching it live um on one of their streams i think as well oh, as reading i love that dude so it's a little bit more interesting so for anyone who's interested right now um, if they were to take a look at Theta Drop, there's some guidelines, but if they get a good like one pager going yeah. of like what their drop consists of, why should people be interested? What kind of utility is it going to have? Um, what's it going to consist of? Stuff like that. And uh, I think they're going to they're going to have people pitch it live to them. So talk to me but about I mean, your roadmap. Talk to me about the roadmap for Theta Frogs. Like what does it look like in, uh, you know, Q2, Q3, whatever? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so started off with them just being kind of like trading card collectibles, which was great. Um, we started doing airdrops. I mean, I'm just a little, I don't, I don't like to be proud about stuff, but I'm happy to say that we were the first NFT project that ever did airdrops on Theta Drop. We kind of That's introduced big, that idea dude. to the Theta Drop team and kind of started doing those. That's big. But um, yeah, with Series 2 and adding utility in, the, one of the first things that we're going to have is a, the exclusive Discord community for the Theta Frogs that's being revamped. Um, we're going to have exclusive Theta Frog streams for people that hold frogs. And the people that can come to these streams that hold frogs will have direct access to building upon the frog, throwing in their own Easter eggs or their own little uh, hidden away, tucked like away signature mechanism? or something like that. What's that? Like a burn mechanism? Like, will you be able to like burn things you have to upgrade them or whatever 
Um, not in the sense of coming to the streams necessarily, right, 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 right. but in the sense of the streams, like having frogs gets people in the door to come to my drawing streams in the future. Like all my Theta Frog streams will be streamed live, but if right. I have people who already have collected the frogs, and they'll be able to throw out suggestions of things to add, and they'll have like voting power of like what gets put into each portrait, pretty much. And so this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that was about it. That was about done with that thought. Um, and so this is interesting. So one thing that I'm super into in the Web3 space personally um, mm -hmm. are DAOs. Like that is something that I am involved in. Uh, I, that's what I believe in the most. And I okay. think that, you know what that is? No. <laughs> Dude. Okay. So a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. Oh, I would have um, never have guessed. And that is like... I just figure out what API just meant and I forgot it. Already. That's amazing. You, well, dude, what is so a, go ahead. <laughs> I forgot. I'm trying to remember what API stands for. I can't uh, remember. Uh, automatic, you know, I don't know. I was going to say some profanity. Uh, profanity. <laughs> I was going to say some profanity. But uh, uh, anyways, yeah. dude, uh, like, okay, so, and this might be an offline conversation that I probably should just say it online, but uh, so DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, right? And what that is, is there is a treasury that the community uh, sets proposals for through a governance framework, and they vote on what that, you know, the assets in the treasury do. And so, like, one of the big ones, uh, I want to be careful what I say here, but, like, um, yeah, I mean, there's some really big ones that, like, you know, they're doing stuff in the media uh, sector. And, like, Rug Radio is a really big one that I am a huge fan of. Um, they are the first decentralized media platform, you know, first um, that, you know, they, they have millions of dollars in the treasury and they are building out, you know, grant systems for like signing talent and stuff. And it's all community led. So what, the reason wow. I bring that up is I think that that's something that really needs to come to Theta. And that's something that, that creators on Theta really need to be aware of because what you're describing is a DAO. And it's a community DAO. There's investment DAOs and all kind of stuff. But what you're describing is building something that the community gets to vote on. And if they own a Theta Frog, you know, there you can have like a governance token and you can also have um, just like an ecosystem token, right? So some people might not want to mm -hmm. vote. But I would really challenge you, and I'm ha I'll send you a bunch of stuff, but I would really challenge you into looking into DAOs because what you're describing can be scaled to a point where like, it's not just on discord, like it's a proper governance framework that like is a business man that like, you know, it can change people's lives. And so when you talk about helping people, I really could see in the coming iterations of theta frogs, there being like a, like a just weird DAO. Um, I really think that's something that, you know, is, is important here because you can get stuck in this. This is what I think. And I want to know your opinion on this. Mm -hmm. People can get so stuck in this NFT cycle of like just dropping pictures and art and like promising utility, but the execution of that utility can become difficult. Like, especially when there's not a, a machine behind it that, supports it i think theta is a great machine mm -hmm. i even wonder if like you know theta i i've read some of the white paper stuff like theta has some very dow characteristics like they're introducing governance and stuff but outside of that like you can build your own ecosystem that exists where think of discord but with a treasury like think of think of having a forum that has $7 million in a treasury and that the community interesting. gets to vote on. Like there's a council, you know, like people get to vote on who's in the Dow council or there's just like a democratic kind of gnosis, like a multi-sig, you know what a multi-sig wallet is? No. I'm going to just tell you. So yeah, so it's, <laughs> uh, so, you know, there's like two different types of governance uh, in Dow's. Uh, one of them is a multi-signature structure, a gnosis safe, which mm -hmm. means like you have to have, you know, like, five out of five or five out of seven people sign on the, like make it sign the transaction on the blockchain to make it go through. 
right? And so then you have like a democratic voting structure where you can do snapshot votes. And the other one is an on-chain governor. And that's really for like billion dollar treasuries. Uh, like Uniswap is an on-chain governor. Um, okay. That's it. People don't even know. Like that's a DAO. Like uh, Uniswap is like it's an exchange or whatever, but it's a DAO. Like they, they brand themselves as a DAO. Um, but like, yeah, man, I don't know. And I could go on for days about this, but what do you think about that? Like, what do you think about that in the future for, for just weird and because does Theta Frogs, Theta Frogs exists in the just weird ecosystem. It right? does. Yeah. I think that's great. And I think that's uh, kind of aligned with where I wanted to take just weird and Theta Frogs, because like you said, I wanted something where people have like a voting power and people have a say in like what gets drawn and what frogs go, you know? what yeah. frogs I make next, things like that, take people's suggestions into account uh, based on what frogs they own. Um, and even just weird in, uh, you know, in the future, because I never wanted just weird, like I said, to be just about me. I want it to be about people and people yeah. coming together in, in, in terms of a community. And I mean, I don't want to get all doom and gloom, but I feel like the way our current society is going, I don't feel like it's too much longer for the earth, you know, going the way we're going, like with our decadence and with the way we kind of like, just the way things are going, I'll just put it that way. I don't okay. feel like it's going to be. Okay. And I feel like as things start to fall apart and as we kind of get back to our roots and get back to like our communities and what really connects us as human beings, I feel like these small communities that we're creating and building will have increased importance in terms of like paving the way forward to the future to like shape the way our world is going to be run, you know? So, so I feel like something like this for just weird TV would be perfect. Oh, it would fit right into the slot. A hundred percent. Let's have it. I'm going to ask the, the same kind of question again. Uh, and, you know, dude, I could talk forever, man. Like, I don't, you know, if, if at any point yeah. you're like, Wes, dude, I got to I got to go, man. Just no, it's know. all good. This is really interesting stuff. I love it. Awesome. So yeah. uh, like, let's, let's go another perfect world situation okay. where, um resources are abundant whatever what would be like the dream utility outside of like shows i mean like i think building a community is huge but like if you could build a charity like if you could build something to research and uh what is r d research and development if you research could build like yeah i couldn't think of the word if you could build like an r d uh, structure, what would be the thing that you are indeed? Oh, well, I'm really into uncovering our past and forging the way forward to the future through like uncovering archaeology and like the mysteries of Atlantis and stuff like that. I think didn't expect that. <laughs> I, th I think I would, I think I would like to fund something that gets people back to their spiritual roots because at the core of what I believe in, I believe we're all spiritual limitless beings that are inha inhabiting like a mortal shell for a limited amount of time and i feel like over the many eons and years i feel like we become disconnected from that spirit and we become more increasingly materialistic yeah or like even hostile with each other and even more disconnected and i feel like that's in no small part to our own society perpetuating all that stuff all the differences and division um so what i would do would be focused on bringing people together and encouraging people to tap into their innate spiritual gifts because I believe that everybody can do, you know, because like Jesus, our man in the Bible, said, like, anything I can do, you can do. Yeah. You know, I actually think that and was I a West Side Story song, but I can do better. Uh, but, uh, but, but I feel that like everybody has the potential for spiritual greatness to unlock gifts, like through just through meditation and connecting with each other. I think we could all be like telepaths and empaths. I believe we could all learn to like read and channel energy. And I think we could all kind of like heal and grow together because I feel, and this is going to get like part of this, is like, this is the just weird kind of comes in, but I feel like in ancient times, like in the times of Atlantis, whatever, I feel like we were all like really like with it. And I feel like we were all like really spiritual, really connected and really like powerful in terms of like the stuff that we could do as human beings. I feel like we let, lived for a lot longer. Our diets were a lot better. Yeah. I feel like everything was just going like really great. Oh my God. Thank you. What is it? Yeah. Wait, hold on. What do we have now? What do we have now? Thank you what is so this? much. What's what kind of tea is this? Oh my gosh. Morgan brought me a, a cup of tea. I used the, the fucking... Um, a queen. Thing. You used the, the tea bag? No, no, no. She you is wanna, a queen. 
you want to introduce her real quick? You want to introduce? She's a goddess. I don't think she wants to come on. She doesn't want to come on. Hey Morgan, good to meet you. Wes said, "Hey Morgan, good to meet you." Hello. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for bringing him tea and not me, even though we're like 17 billion miles away. He said, "Thank you for bringing him tea and not him, even though we're like 17 billion miles away." I don't want to listen, dude. I'm single (laughs) and I don't need to go into therapy right now. I'm I'm an emotional wreck, I love Morgan. Hosting people. I'm gonna have a teapot. God, I, I am a I am a puppy and I am an emotional wreck. And I don't know why I'm single at 28. You know, I'm a great guy. Everything's okay, dude. Like I, you know, I, I was can, I was single at 28. You know, dude, I can I can do Chris Brown hand movements. Ooh, but not like I mean like dance movements, not like punching people. Anyways, man, let's oh move my on. god, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Let's keep it pushing. So, uh, but okay, I want to put on my corporate hat for a second though, and what you were talking about. Okay. Um, and, uh, so, you know, you talk like, I, 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 I love the like ethos or whatever behind it. I love, you know, but if, you know, you come into this meeting and we say, listen, we have, you know, $5 million that we're ready to, to put towards this. Like, what does the money go towards? Like, what does, like, what do the funds do? Like, do I have it flushed out in my head right now? Like where I'm going to put the money? I mean, even like hypothetically, and if not like, dude, that's totally fair. Right. But like. I feel like, I feel like what we need, I feel like we need like a complete restructuring of our society. And I think we need and to that's like. That's a lot more than a $5 million. Though. It's a lot more than $5 million, but I feel like, you know, and this is going to get, this is going to get deep and a little conspiracy with it. But I feel like our kids, like from the time we're, we're being born, like we're being indoctrinated into the society and indoctrinated to believe a certain thing. And I feel like. I don't have the right answer for that right now, but I feel like what yeah. needs to take place, this overhaul needs to take place from birth onwards. And I think we need to develop generations of like socially and spiritually conscious individuals because another big problem is people aren't very self-aware or self-reflective. I don't think that's a big thing we teach in our society. Like people often do things or react to situations and don't often take the time to think about why they do the things they do. Or what mm-hmm. leads them to make certain choices or even do any digging like beneath the surface of like what drives them to be the type of person that they are. And I think people do discover that during therapy. But I think those types of like thoughts and connections need to be being made from like childhood onwards to develop somebody into a person that's not going to have a bunch of like mental and emotional hang ups or baggage and something that you have to like uncluster yourself from in your late twenties, early thirties or whatever. So what, so what you're saying is like, like my business brain turns on and it goes, so, uh, the like first initiative is like, uh, early childhood education, like early childhood development, right. Creating, um, basically systems that, you know, aren't focused on like, um, there's a really cool school system. I don't know a lot about it, but have you heard of like Montessori schools? I don't think so. No. Okay. So I'm not super educated on it. So I don't want to like dive too deep, but basically it's like where you put your kid in this elementary school or whatever preschool. And instead of mm-hmm. teaching them like math and stuff, you see what they like and you like fuel that. And so like, that's what the school's for. And so, you know, it's interesting, but um, like, man, I, I could really see um, there being like a curriculum, you know, there being a, a research where, you know, you find what kind of curriculums children resonate with and how to kind of, you know, if like you could, if it's crazy how like our education curriculums haven't changed in forever, right? Like you get school books and, you know, there's like 60 names in there back from like the 1830s. But like, oh, yeah. you know, I think that it's time for that to change. And I think that college mm-hmm. is also something that um, is becoming far less respected uh, unless you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, like I'm not going to let anyone uh, perform a surgery on me that's not a doctor. I mean, that hasn't gone to college. That's a ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, but you know, outside of that, like I think that with what Web three is, and 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 this is a good transition into this, right? So like with mm-hmm. what Web three really is, um, I think those opportunities are real. So talk to me about like um, your understanding of web three like understanding you, yeah like what you, um yeah i don't know what happened to web one and web two uh, to be honest <laughs> we just kind of like now we're in web three what was web one was that america online was that when you used to get the disc at the movie theater and in the, in the bin and everyone was installing on the computer as dial up and web two yes 
and completely then to, flew by me. I don't yeah. know when that was. Social media. That's when like um, social media dropped. HTML. What is that? I don't even know. But now we got know. Web three. I I can't really even quantify it using words because I don't even know. It's just these are just words that have been kind of thrown out me recently, and I'll be the first one to say like I'm a very very uh i don't know i just kind of focus on like spirituality and like drawn pictures and talking about life and then when it gets into like these details like like code when it comes to coding yeah or yeah, math yeah or yes even crypto to an extent and nfts crypto like i learned so most dude. of my crypto stuff on theta taught by my audience like literally teaching me about different cryptos and joey helped me out a lot but even before coming here, like, I didn't even know, like, I barely knew what a Bitcoin was, dude, to it, be perfectly I, dude, honest. Oh, uh, crypto drives me so crazy. And it sucks because, like, as I'm growing my channel and brand, like, the videos that do really well on YouTube are, like, exposing scam tokens or, like, you know, reviewing tokens. I hate it. I mean, it's whatever. I probably shouldn't say that. But, like, man, it's not, like, that is such macro value to me. Um, mm -hmm. But let me explain to you what I understand Web3 is because... Um, like I'm an artist, man. I, I make art, but I think that my brain is far more like, um, like I professionally have interviewed, you know, like Will Ferrell and, and like, I've been in like corporate entertainment for a while and then, you know, had a moment where I quit my job, whatever. So, uh, what, this is web three, man. So web two, right? Like, let's say that you were super into, um, cars or whatever, and you made an Instagram page where you posted the cool like you took pictures of cars posted the coolest pictures whatever you don't own that ip like that ip is owned by the platform that that is on in web 2 as a creator as an entrepreneur your whole goal was to either get a brand deal get a percentage of ad revenue um or like blow up in the mainstream you know like there wasn't there wasn't equity in web 2 mm -hmm. and so what web 3 is is literally like literally all it is is just the ownership economy. It is the ownership side of the internet. And that's what's interesting is like we are now in a conversation where um, you don't have to acquire uh, investments from big brands and you don't have to get sponsorship deals um, for your content because the community can fund your mission. And so I think that what people are missing here is that like NFTs is like art and pictures are cool, but people don't really understand that. Like that's not what NFTs are like NFTs. Excuse me. What NFTs are, are a smart contract, right? Mm -hmm. That lives on the blockchain that you, it's really hard to get rid of. Like it's almost impossible to get rid of. And it's baked into something that you can carry around at all times. Like the argument of like, you know, like the right click save is funny, whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, I could stand in front of your house and take a picture in front of your house and say, that's my house. And it's not like I, you know, I don't have the deed, but right. I can prove that I own this asset that the market defines through this smart contract is worth this thing. And I think people also don't understand that like you don't own that picture you own a private key to an address where the picture lives. And there's like so many conversations that need to be had around what this is. You and own like, a private key to the address. I don't mean to stop you there, but you own a private key to the address where it lives. So yeah, like you don't own any that's, crypto coins. That's very interesting. Cause like, that's even, you're even blowing my mind a little bit. Cause I thought I kind of understood NFTs, but you're <laughs> kind of stretching my imagination just a little bit. Yeah. So, so like, think about that's this, wild. like, think about this, like you don't own any cryptocurrency, like you don't own any tokens. What you own is, and it's what, you know, when you look at like ether scan and stuff, it proves mm -hmm. it. Your seed phrase, your private key, right? Your wallet address is just your private key to like unlock the ownership of another address that is represented by an image a video or a brand that is what it is like if they like 
the people who it's own like it, somebody telling me how babies were made for the first time. I'm you want me to show like, you real quick? How babies are made. <laughs> but uh but it's ugly, dude. It's not a fun sight, dude. It's terrible. But uh oh, Lord. but man, like yeah, no, dude, like uh it's crazy. Like it is the understanding in this space is something and that's one of the reasons why my brand exists, man. Like I'll tell you, dude, like my, my passion and purpose in life is to interview people. That is where I feel the most like grounded and, and purpose. But, mm -hmm. um, I come from a news background. I come from a journalistic background. And so I have, before I, I created ultralight, uh, and I quit my job, man, I literally made a Twitter account and didn't like, no one followed me. And I just was a, an audience member for six months and like deep, did a deep dive into understanding what this is. And so, like, even for you, like, I think as someone who's found success, like, you, you have, is it fair to say that your life, like, on a monetary sense has changed, like, exponentially? Yeah, absolutely, because of NFTs in ways that I never could have dreamt, like, a year ago, even, because a year ago, I don't even think I knew what NFT was. And yeah. it, it's, it's amazing how far it's come. And I do understand the truly limitless nature of NFTs, how... Like you mentioned, deeds for houses being NFTs or deeds for a car or oh, there's insurance like real world crazy. insurance and real world experiences being tied to NFTs that can be redeemed and things like that. And just the, the way we're taking it and how NFT artists and creators are continuously trying to improve upon their own projects and build and like the utility that we're seeing. Um, I love how it's all developing because it's really just changing the way we do business, the way we interact with each other, the way artists kind of get their work out there and stuff like that. It's really, it's really exciting to be sure. So I would, and yeah. you know, obviously you and I will continue to talk offline, but like, man, I would really challenge you to, because as someone who now has made a, um, a footprint, um, you know, what you can do is limitless, but if you understand like a little more of the like micro details in this, I think that it can be exponentially more valuable. And so dude, I, I'm a fan of what you do, man. I'm a fan of your spirit. I really think that you're one of the people in this space that uh, is bringing value even outside of the artwork, like like just who you are and your openness and willingness to accept people who might not be accepted by the majority um, is as or more valuable than the art you create. So um, man, as you continue to grow, as you continue to create, you know, we're watching. Uh, and we're supporting you and I'm excited, man. And if there's anything that I can do to help you, um, you know, just understand this space a little more or whatever, uh, please, man, like, let me know. Um, you know, I think we're going to wrap this thing up here pretty soon. Sure. Um, unless you got, you know, if you, you have any confessions you would like to make it, you know, we're, <laughs> confessions. It's, yeah, there's no one listening. So if you want to confess to anything, feel free. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, well, I definitely think we do need to talk a little bit more about just NFTs and Web3 and stuff like that. Because yeah. the way I, like, I just fly by the seat of my pants, like I told you, the Theta Frogs thing, I just started drawing frogs one day and I got approached about a project and things kind of line up. And the way I kind of bring these things about, like I just I, we talk a lot on my stream about manifesting, mm. you know, your ideal future, your ideal outcome. And you kind of put that vision out there. Yeah. You kind of imagine yourself where you want to be. You see yourself there, you feel all those emotions that associate with like being in that ideal life or achieving that ideal situation. Yeah. And the universe just kind of like fills in the details, you know, you just go for it. So for me, it was never so much about, and this needs to change, I think, a little bit. It was never so much about understanding Web3 or understanding the NFT space to the letter or even understanding stuff like DAOs, like you're mentioning. It was about me putting myself out there and letting the universe take care of me and kind of like, falling backwards and like being caught by like you know everything that i was dreaming about so i do think i could benefit from learning a bit more about the technical side of things yeah which but I, I think do that, that like that release and uh and like when you let go man that's like when you know if your spirit is is good it will carry you to the promised mm -hmm. land um so yeah oh yeah so you know as we wrap this up man like is there anything else you want to share is there any uh like, where can people find you? I mean, I feel like everyone that's watching this is probably from your stream. So, uh, probably, you know, my audience maybe. is not big yet, but I'm excited to have you guys in this. I'm excited to, to let you see kind of who I am because uh, interviewing is definitely my passion, man. And so thank you for, for rating, you know, this, this stream, man. It really means a lot to me. And um, yeah, where can people find you? Well.
Um, they could find me at theta.tv slash just weird TV or on Twitter at just weird theta. Um, that's where I hang out most often times. But um, I guess the last thing I could probably say is I think it was somebody, I think it was maybe Carl Young, you know, that fucking guy. Yeah, he said, yeah, uh, no matter how alone and isolated you may feel, if you consistently do your honest work, then unknown friends will come and seek you. And that's one of the things that I've found with streaming is that if you just be true to yourself, you be authentic, you put yourself out there, you speak from the heart, whatever your heart needs to say, and get off your chest, then people you had no idea who would become your truest friends will just literally come out of the woodwork and find their way into your channel and you'll meet them as long as you're going the extra mile to be yourself and put yourself out there. So I see you doing yourself, like doing that for yourself. And I'm glad we had the chance to connect. So Same. thank you for the opportunity. It was really fun. Oh, man, it was but, a pleasure. Um, yeah, it was absolutely a pleasure. And that's what I'd say to everybody out there. You know, if it's like, if there's a little bit of fear, but you're feeling your heart pulling you towards it, I'd say go for it. You know, the greatest because the universe things in life, will reward you. The greatest things you know? in life are on the other side of fear. Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah. And so guys, you know, uh, if you want to go follow me on Twitter at ultralight underscore TV, and if there's anyone that you think you specifically, Matt, but also the community that I should interview on Theta or in general, like I'm, I'm looking, you know, what's cool is I actually have, um, some interviews lined up, uh, Clove is in the mix. Uh, oh, I love that guy. Yeah. I'm probably going to get Joey yeah. back on here. We're trying to get nice. Oliver on. Um, nice. but man, if, if there's anyone else in the community and like Matt, if you can send them my way, like I want to do, I'd like to like every Monday do a live interview. Um, I love this. I think that this is amazing. So I would just ask you to send one person my way if you can. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, this has but, been a lot of fun. Um, there, there are a couple of people that are coming to mind right now, okay. but well, text I'll, me. I'll text get me. you in the DMs. Yeah, okay. absolutely, awesome. dude. Well, thank you so much for having me, chat. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we'll be back. I'm going to come back on the stream. I'm actually going out of town uh, tomorrow, so I'm going to try to live stream while I'm out, but thank you again, Matt. Uh, and this was Ultra Light. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Wes. All right. Later, bro. <laughs> Take care. Boom. All right. All right. All right. Um, well, there you go, guys. There you go. We did it. As we're wrapping this up again, guys, I just want to say thank you. Um, Matt, that was amazing. Thank you so much for being on this. Uh, I couldn't be more grateful. And to the chat and the community, I haven't even looked at the stats. I don't even have them pulled up. I don't know who's here if I'm just by myself kicking it. Um, but uh, but I, I seriously am like beyond grateful for um, everyone that is here and that is listening and that is accepting me. Um, it's really just been like, you know, one of the coolest, coolest experience. Um, like I never thought I would go live. I never thought that, you know, going live would be something that I do. Um, and I, I, yeah, I mean, this is just so dope. So, um, you know, as I wrap this up, I just wanted to, you know, with Matt getting off, I didn't want to talk about myself in the, uh, in the middle of the stream, but, uh, just a little background on me for all the 75 people that are in here. And it's insane that there are 75 people in here or 45 people in here. Um, man, of course, Matt. And, uh, you know, I wanted to kick you off so I could talk about myself, <laughs> But uh, nah, so I come from a corporate entertainment background, uh, have interviewed uh, A-list celebrities, COVID happened, lost that job, was in the sales world and quit uh, to make Ultralight and to talk to people that are making a change in this world. So go give me a follow on Twitter, Ultralight underscore TV. And uh, I was going to say YouTube, but I, I put up all the same videos here. I'm trying to get access to putting up more videos uh, a week because I just have three right now. So if someone can help me get more videos up a week because I have like 30 in the bank. That would be amazing. So I'm going to go follow uh, everyone who gave me a follow, by the way. Um, just give me some time to, I'm going to go pee and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, have a amazing night. And uh, yeah, hit me in the DMs, whatever. Welcome to the community. Let's get it going. Peace out, y'all.